Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, because I didn't, I didn't, uh, you froze up there for a bit and I didn't hear what you said. Did you say that um, you got someone else who cannot come? Dave Perry cannot come and Chris cannot come. Okay. So, um, Alan, I thought was going to try to make it, but he's been having a lot of stuff going on too. So let's just go with just the two of us okay. today. And if Alan shows up, that'll be great. Okay. Um, so the I'm just sharing, here's my, my minutes for tonight. And I don't think I had, I, I sent the minutes from, from last week, yeah, I don't. I just we, got them. Yeah, I don't think we had any. Um, I'll pull them up, but I, 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 I think they were. I wouldn't think we'd have any corrections on that. Let's see, that was twelve, mm -hmm. nineteen, twenty-two, Let's see. Uh, so, because most of our discussion was actually about slides and things, I didn't mm -hmm. um, didn't have too much. And I know you. Um, we got that note from Alan about the or uh, link from for the survey. Right. We. We have the survey, and I, I, I think it would be good to just go over that tonight yeah. and just look and get another set of eyes on it, if you don't mind yeah. looking over that. Yep, that would be good. Let me, um, okay, so what I have for the notes, I realized um, I wanted, so this is for, would be for this week. Um, I realize it probably if we try to put the schedule in one place, so we can just kind of look again, mm -hmm. like some extra eyeballs on this. So um, life hack, I talked to Rima mm -hmm. and she said, yes, come on the 12th. It seems like the new people won't actually be officially on board until later in January. Right. So she said January 12th would be good. Um, she said about 10 minutes. I said five minutes for questions. She didn't actually say that, but she said 10 minutes. So, okay. um, so that's the earliest thing we have uh, that I okay. know about, anyway, on the 12th. So one of the things we'll obviously need to do is to go through the presentation and choose the very, you know, top highlights that we think are important to convey to life act. Mm -hmm. And then decide who's gonna do that presentation I think we should have several people there, but if we're only doing 10 minutes, probably just one person, I'm guessing, to do the presentation. Right. I think one person to do the presentation and then mm -hmm. just other people to be there so that they can ask questions. <laughs> yes. Um, so that I think it, it, it looks like we have longer. So, uh, so again, so that's the next thing that comes up so in about two and a half weeks. Uh, the tome is the same week. Right. We so have, we have to have an article. Right. Then Leica is two more weeks later. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you have an actual time. Were you making those arrangements with uh, Leica to be on yeah, the Yeah, I'll talk to Greg. And, and we, have our, we have our board meeting will be on, I think, the 11th. Oh, Okay. And so I'll have, I'll talk with, with Greg. Okay. All righty. Um, and then in terms of all the flow of things, I thought the next thing after that would be something like 10 days before the public meeting, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, post something on the, like a website, Possibly, I don't know when the bulletin board is going to go live, but if it does, you know, we could use that. Um, somebody or more than one of us, I guess, I guess probably just one of us post to next door. I don't know. You, you use, you do use next door. I've seen you on the right occasion. Not very often. Mm -hmm. I usually will do it just to do a post. Yep. Um, 
and I, I kind of, I'm a reluctant next door user. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, I use it because it's just, you know, helpful to find out what's going on. I don't post very much myself and I don't usually comment. Um, I did find out today though, how to get rid of all the ads. Yeah, I, I Jim told me that and yeah, that's really good. <laughs> I was like, I had no idea. So that's made it better. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll think about that. Um, we talked about putting an announcement on the, the public bulletin board, the ferry terminal. Mm -hmm. and I check with who, who approves that. Uh, that's Paul Davis. We just drop off um, oh. drop off the flyer at the in the tome box drop box, which is on uh, North Nugent. Do you know yeah. where that is? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because he has the key. Because he has the key to the um to the there's like a, a covered bulletin board at the ferry yes. terminal. Okay. Um, and I figure if we do the flyers, we talked about posting them um, at, at the, the island or the library, Grange, uh -huh. post office, et cetera. We might make one for the school. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and, we could, and, and we could decide if we wanted to hand out flyers in the ferry line. Mm -hmm. Let's think about that. Mm -hmm. but, um, uh, I was trying to think, is there a, like a public bulletin board, I want them at the congregational church? Um, yeah, yeah, it's in the hallway, um, but it, that's it's, the only one I know of, it's in the hallway, but I don't, I don't think they're using their downstairs fellowship hall. Oh, probably not. And so... And I think people usually don't go in the back way. Um, okay. I don't, I really don't know because I don't go to church. I'm not a church person at all. Yeah. Well, I guess we could ask if they have public announcements. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Rame is the person to talk yeah. to about that. I yeah. think she's still the church secretary. Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. And also, Chris, you could the, uh -huh. ask him too, because he's the um, pastor for the congregational, not the congregational church, the chapel. Chapel. Mm hmm. And I didn't know if there was any, yeah, I don't know if people go up there anymore. Right now, I'm, I'm assuming fire department might be a place, but I don't know if their public space isn't open right now. No, no. Um, we could see about getting an ad on the Islander bulletin board, the Islander, the Islander, a uh, sign. Oh, the uh, electronic. The uh, yeah, uh, the electronic sign. Oh, okay, that's a good idea. Yeah. I hadn't. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. So. Excellent. All righty. And I'll just say, yeah, I think that um, Brad charges a little bit to use that, but mm -hmm. I would be willing to donate the money. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. We'll, yeah, just kind of keep our eyes out for anything else that is a um, public, public site. I am. Um, it's the kind of thing you realize when you really start looking for it, you, you walk past them all the time and don't think about it. So, okay. Okay, let's see. So then, so if we did that 10 days before the public meeting and if the public meeting is the seventh and that would make that something like end of January. Mm -hmm. Um.
And then I was guessing at, at during the public meeting, we would be able to give people the link to the island survey. Right. And the survey that I was working on with um, Alan is mostly just on ferry impacts. Exactly. Not and exactly. so this is not the same survey as the one that I'm envisioning for the public dock. Right. Okay. Right. Although I should put the, I should actually put uh, the ferry impact survey up here. Just kind of trying to get in one place all the things that are going on. So mm -hmm. divide up and figure out when. Um, and that looked like it, it, I mean, so early, I'll just say early January. Yeah, it's, got, we kind of, it's almost ready to go live, but we wanted to have people weigh in on it this week. So, um, Did you have a chance to find out if the Grange, it would make sense to do a presentation at the Grange or if you're having- I have not had a chance to talk to Mel. Okay. So- Well, we'll, I don't I know. need to do that. Yeah. I'm I'll try of... to do it. I'll try to do it in this, in the, during this week, I'll try to give Mel a call. Okay. But that seems like uh, pretty much the, the, and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, and just send this out to people in an email probably tomorrow before I get minutes out just to say to people, you know, this is what it looks like our next, what, six weeks or whatever. It looks to me like Parks and Recreation meets on the third a Thursday, mm -hmm. which would mean we'd want to get on their agenda if we want to do it in February. It's February 17th. I don't know how we okay. get on that agenda, but I realized from the minutes from the email that Chris sent, and it looks like that's what the yeah and it, it and it may not be good to get on for february but perhaps march you know it might be too soon depending on the results of our public meeting yeah. i don't know and that's uh that's only yes um yeah, I wonder when their agenda goes out. Well, uh, yeah, let's ask people. I don't, I personally know. Yeah, we'd have to probably check with Terry Terry on that. Okay. Yeah. So it would be March. Um, let me just look real quick at the calendar. Well, so if it's February 17th, it's probably March 17th too, because usually. Probably. There tends to be, you know, it's taken me my entire life to realize. Unless that. it's a leap year, they tend to be. Right. Pretty February. much the same. March one, two, yes, yeah, 17. Okay. Okay. All right. So I think, I think that was all the, what? Actually, I, I don't, I, I don't know if Chris has had a chance to follow up with any of those neighbors. I realized we probably should make a list of who the neighbors are because I was thinking for some reason, I, when I first thought about this, I was sort of thinking about people who are actually on the water and, and north of the where the dock would be. But the people, um, I don't know who's in the house uh, just south of the Beach Store Cafe, the blue one. They're not here too often, but I've seen lights in the last couple of weeks over there. Mm -hmm. And then there's one more house, I think, one more uh, right before them. So I realized we might want to um, have either one of us contact them or think about, I, I hate to just send a letter. I really feel like it'd be better for somebody to contact them. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and Chris said he would do this. So, yeah, so I we'll think follow. we'll just let him do it. Um, yeah, and then uh, we do have kind of a rough a rough survey together for ferry impact. So um, I can try to look that up and pull it up on the. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. If we want to go ahead and look, 
Um, okay, yeah, if you want to go ahead and pop it up. Okay. So uh, the Public Doc Advisory Committee is collecting personal experiences to analyze impact of a ferry suddenly being unavailable and present the case for a public dock, not a marina. <laughs> this dock would also assist with urgent need access to the mainland. We would use this information to help present to the Whatcom County Parks and Recreation Department justification for a public dock, present to the Whatcom County Council and the Public Works Department the full story of how outages impact people on and off the island. Okay. So that's kind of our, 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 our two reasons for doing this. Yeah. Okay. The survey has to collect information from islanders, businesses, and visitors that have been impacted by planned and unplanned ferry outages. It will help us best represent the community if you fill out the form once per hour. Oh, once per outage. Okay. Uh, maybe figure out wording to get folks that had service companies on the island. Yeah. So, oh, I see. For them whose staff got stuck and get them to forward the survey to the company. So this is an open survey. And I was kind of curious about how um, it'll just be from the like a website. Yeah, that's what we were thinking of doing. It was just running it through the like a website, and um, and then if people heard about it but they don't have internet access but would like to um, do a report thing, I wouldn't mind. They could call me and talk to me, and I could help. Oh, them you could fill it out or yeah. something. Yeah, basically on their behalf. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, which of the following applies to your experience with outages? I am Islander business, island-based business, mainland-based visitor. Okay. Do we want a difference between a day visitor and an overnight visitor? Um. I I'm don't scared. think so. Okay. That might be getting too, too specific. Okay. I don't know. What type of outage was this? Scheduled maintenance during the year, mechanical breakdown, weather, when we were impacted in the weather. So that's asking. Date. When were you impacted and for how long? And I'm just trying to think when, um, when you ask for this data and you think about the end goal, which is to have basically say a graph, then then you're going to have to ask, are we asking number of hours, uh, uh, number of days? I think um, um, you know, I have to think about this in the end. Maybe we won't be able to do that because it'll be just too hard to, to quantify. It might be better. The next question is actually how many people had the following, missed this, unable to get to my job, unable to get to school. Um, yeah, I think we literal. can quantify them. Yep, that's going to be numbers of, yeah, yeah, that, that's very, that's easy to, to graph. Uh -huh. Let's see, had urgent medical non-emergency need, missed a hard to schedule critical medical appointment. Um, 
unable to get to my job, unable to get to school, unable to return home. And I guess we don't care whether you were unable to return home and you were stuck, you, you hoped to return home to the mainland or you couldn't return home to the island. Either way. Well, you know, one question might be, a uh, car was on the wrong side. <laughs> How do you th how do you ask that? Your car was was um, had to leave car on the uh, okay. Uh, what do you say? Had to um, vehicle was um, well stuck. I mean, your vehicle was stuck on the wrong side. Basically, if you were you could get yourself across, but you had no vehicle. Okay, yeah. Um, that's the big thing that happened last time I thought there's just a whole bunch of people, who islanders who were stuck on the mainland. Their, their cars were stuck on the mainland. Mm -hmm. I had a feeling there were more of those than stuck. the car was stuck on the island. Yeah, well, if your car is stuck on the island, it's not as bad because you can just go home. Not, yeah, it's not as bad because there's also a place to leave it that's reasonably safe. Right, and um, there's a place to leave it and stuff. But if and, but if you're not an islander and your car is over here, and you're trying to get home, right, yeah. whether it's just from a visit or from your job, and you have to leave both, you know, either your car or your work truck, you know, that's that's significant. That's significant. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think probably an explicit, and I, I can't just. I mean, um, I don't know if just at one question, a car was was stuck on island or a car was stuck on main. Okay. Um, I would be interested to find out how many were stuck on the mainland because that is something that. Um, um, for islanders to suddenly come up with a place to leave your car for two days is not trivial. Yeah, yeah, no, I know that was that was creepy weepy for a lot of people mm -hmm. because um, some people were able to go over to Alana's parking lot spot. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up just leaving mine on the mainland over in the parking lot that's over next to the house is it's a longer walk but it's the it's the parking lot that's up um haxton oh okay i've seen sign i saw signs to it when there was the dry dock and other than that i, I yeah where it was because one of there's something up there it looks like it could be parking but it's usually underwater yeah no this sure isn't was, in the underwater one <laughs> yeah i wasn't sure if that was actually county but yeah let's ask that because it also helps us to Okay. Judge, when we, because one of the things I'm also interested in is in, when we talk about the response to, you know, how we coordinate a response to an outage, particularly an unplanned outage, I think that having an idea of um, the, the magnitude of it, are we talking four cars? Or are we talking about, you know, 30? And I'd be interested to find out what, what that uh, number How is. many cars were, let, were ended up? Yeah, there were more than there. Yeah, there was a bunch of cars that were parked on the mainland. Because remember, this is also the secondary effect, which is not only did you have to figure out how to get yourself home, but then when mm -hmm. the ferry returned to service, you had to figure out how to get your car back. Yeah, yeah, so, no, you had to get you had to get back down to the ferry dock, and then <laughs> yeah, and then get the dropped ferry off, and then go walk. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, then we found out we, we, there was a ferry we missed because there were all these people trying to get their cars back. Mm -hmm. And so we went on what we thought was going to be like a normal day. We ended up not going at all. The first Monday, we didn't go at all because everybody was trying to get their trucks back. And so <laughs> the line was like, you know, down the hill from the Islander. Um, yeah. This weirdo time of the morning because they were, they were trying to get their trucks back. 
And so I'm assuming the same thing was on the other side. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's, um, I think that would be a good one to. Uh... Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Were you able to eventually get across during the outage? And, and that one, I'm not real happy with the way that's, that's worded. Is do you think was it ye yes on the passenger? Yes, I was able to use a passenger ferry. No, I I had to have a car and I couldn't. I mean, because you there's some scenarios where you can use the passenger ferry. Like Bruce and I use the bus a lot, so for us to not have a car is not, you know, show stopping. Yes. Things. So. Yeah. Um, maybe it's maybe it's it's two questions were you able to get across yes no if yes did you just take the passenger ferry did you get a ride did you or uh, did you hmm. it's an interesting question were you able to eventually get across yeah and that that there's can we go down some more uh please feel free if you were able, able to, to make it across somehow, what difficulties and hazards you personally faced are of interest in addition to detailed background on your I unique see. experience in need? Also, if you were a worker for a business who was stuck on the island, what challenges did you have staying overnight or getting home? It should be. Got it. So to decide whether to ask that, um, I, I honestly, if you were asking me, I'm not sure how I would answer the, were you able to eventually get across during the outage? Because- um, Yeah, I see, I don't think that's a good yes, no question. Right, right. Because I think I want to find out like- How? Um, you know, <sighs> I, I think that the, the county doesn't count it as an outage if they're providing passenger only service. Uh huh. Um, you know, I, they seem to think, well, we've got the passenger ferry going, but. So everybody uh, was taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, yeah, maybe we'll ponder this. I think the 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 sort of back back up a little bit. It's just the, the question: What are you trying to get at from this? The thing question. I want to know is like how many people were able to take advantage of a good Samaritan driving people back and forth. Um, you know, making people crawl down the rocks or having or having people you know getting a ride in a private boat so wait, so the question really because <laughs> i'm pretty sure you can't drive across <laughs> so i'm pretty sure yeah. driving is not an option so so no. if you're able to getting across in a private boat or well, a chartered be, boat i think that would be the question i would think i would phrase it that way is if you um did you uh make arrangements to go across, uh, not using the passenger ferry. Yeah. Did you find it? Yeah, and I, and I think if, if you were stuck on the mainland, if mm -hmm. you were an island resident stuck on the mainland, were you able to get home? Um, um, yes. Or, 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 or what arrangements did you, were you did you have to make? Did you have to stay overnight? On the, I think you asked explicitly. Did you have? Yeah, to stay if you had to stay overnight in town. Yes. Um, how much did that cost? Or you know, because I I think we want to measure like that financial impact to people. Right. Right. So let me just go ahead and just say. Um, um bad question um
I think it's yes, were you um, did did you need to stay? Did you need to stay? Going right. If yes. I don't know if, if it's yes. Um, how much? How much did that cost? I don't know. Um, what was the approximate cost? Please describe. Um, yeah. What was your approximate? Yeah, because because you could have said, yeah, I stayed with friends, but I took him out to a nice restaurant because you know. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, what was the cost? And possibly transport. So maybe you had you Ubered over to the hotel. Yeah, trans cost of accommodations, transport, meals. Yeah, meals, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know for us, you know, the one when Jim. When Jim ended up doing the um, the aid car trip into town, mm -hmm. we had to take a cab back, and it was like seventy five dollars to get just from St. Joe's to the ferry dock, and um, you know, so it's it it, it is much more spendy than taking the ferry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and also would be, yeah. And if, if you were caught on the island during an outage, were you able to get to the mainland Yeah, same question, really. Mm -hmm. Did you need to stay overnight? It is exactly the same question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you able to find accommodations on the island, transport meals, etc.? Yeah. Um, now we, you know, if people end up, you, you don't want to have a million page survey. So I can understand if people gave a good enough description, you know, we, you could parse out from their description, some of the answers to these things, but would be, it's usually easier for people if they simply have a yes, no, and a, mm -hmm. something to explicit instead of a blank, a blank yeah. form. Okay. Yeah. And, and then, so I think I think that replaces this, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, well, and then I, I also though I'd like to know. Um, Did you did you receive help getting to the mainland or I, I'd like to figure out how many people received help from private boaters. Yeah. A private boat, a private boat, or a chartered boat. And I think on this one is if yes, could you describe it and give the cost? 
Yeah, and yeah, if yes. Oops. Um, and I'd like to ask something about the access. Oh, well, well, that yes. uh -huh, uh -huh. Is, that's, I, that's where I would like to ask a question. Um, you know, if you had to climb down the, you know, was it, was getting on and off the boat in an easy affair or so, you know, just that's, I'd kind of like to know that. Um, yes, uh, almost how did you? It's almost how did you? So if you say that climb down the rocks, I mean, someone, a young, I don't know, maybe a person would say, oh, yeah, I didn't really care. I did climb all down the damn riprap. And someone else would say, I climbed the rip down the riprap and all but killed myself. If yes, how did you reach the boat? Yeah. How did you reach the boat to board? Yeah. And disembark. Uh huh. Uh. Yeah. Or I guess you could say, how did you reach the boat to get on and off? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but also, if it's where. Where did the boat land? Because I'm going to send this survey, I'm going to send notes to my friends who were on the island during, that were visiting at my, oh, uh -huh. my house that had to leave during, during this time. Yeah. How did they get? And I ask them to fill, fill this out because they were visitors at, um, for one of those. Mm -hmm. How did they get over? They came over on the ferry. Oh, so oh, so they were. They were the, visiting. They on the yeah on the July thirty first outage. Uh huh. Um, or maybe it was August the first, but uh, yeah, it was the Saturday. Yeah. Uh, it was either August the 1st or July 31st on that outage. Um, I had um, about 22 people at my house. 22? Uh-huh. Well, what an extraordinarily inconvenient time to have the ferry go. Out. Yeah, it was an extraordinarily inconvenient time. But yeah, yeah, we had just finished up a week long sailing trip in the San Juan Islands. Yeah. And there were 24 of us on the boat. Um, so I had I had more like about 26 people at the house and they, they, we were going to it was like the the, you know, we had returned home on Friday. People had stayed over an extra day. Yeah. so that we could all have a nice dinner on Lummi. I had some people that were taking a tour at uh, the farm, uh, Full Bloom Farm. I had arranged for some people to go up to Debbie Pollock's studio. So, and then we were gonna get together and have a lovely, I had a, a gorgeous salmon dinner, you know, that we, we were going to have. And- oh, golly. Um, and, you know, I had spot prawns and salmon, and I, I, I just had this whole dinner that had been I'd been planning for like um, all over a month, <laughs> and this event that we've been working on for a year, 
And so it, it hit me pretty bad. And um, this was before that we knew that Jim had cancer. We had all this stuff that has, was in the works and um, we still decided to go for it. And Jim said, go for it, go for it. Everything's fine. And then it just, it didn't go good for me, but I had alter alternate plans and, you know, my alternate plans, people uh, stepped up and helped. And, and, but then when the ferry went down, it, it people kind of panicked and had to get home because I had like eight of the people were flying out the next morning. Uh out of SeaTac, so I had, there was one, two, three, four. Yeah, there were, there were six people that had a flight out of SeaTac the next morning. And, um, and, and one of them had, they had just, out of just luck, they had left their car, one of them had left their car on the other side, it was a rental car, oh. just talked oh, on the ferry. Him. Yeah. Yeah. And had hopped on the ferry and they were able to drive uh, five of them, all, all six that had to, all six that had to be at SeaTac um, for morning flights out on, on Sunday, um, went into town and stayed in their hotels. And then the ones that didn't have flight that were flying out of Bellingham, didn't have flights out until in the afternoon on Saturday, but they had their hotels because I, I could not put 24 people up at my house very easily. <laughs> so, you know, it was just, it was, it was really strange, really crazy. Um, but, you know, we got everybody home okay. They, you know, they ended up having to take cabs um, from Gooseberry to their hotels. Um, but, you know, there, there was a lot of impact <laughs> yeah. to a lot of people that day. Yeah. And I'm just, and, you know, there was another person that was getting married on the island that day. Oh, wow. Chris's daughter was having her wedding reception that day. So, you know, there was just, it was, it was, uh, you know, it was just, there was a lot of stuff happening. Madness. Yeah. Well, we should get good data. And, you know, that raises a good point. We should, um, um, make sure that this, that, that the concierge person, I don't know how else you reach other people who have uh, overnights, short-term stays on the island, but mm -hmm. they have a high, I would have thought, a higher vested interest. In yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and that could be, have been like, um, you know, people that knew that their guests were impacted and you know yeah. but you could send it send it out to your friends or, or guests that you had that yeah. were impacted by the by the outage yeah or fill it out basically on their behalf say I was the landlord and I know this is what happened so mm -hmm. um, yeah crazy okay well, I think we've done well, Mary. Yeah. No, I think those are those are some good things. I think we've at least made a dent. Yeah. And I'll I'll try to get these recommendations to Alan and try to add them into the survey. So and if you can, if you have any more thoughts, just let me know. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, and the other thing is that I was going to bring up tonight. Yeah. Is I received an email from Tom Philpot. Okay. 
Um, and I just want this to get into the record. Okay. Um, I'm looking it up right now. So he said, he sent me this email, and I, I can forward it to everybody, but Mary, someone said you are on the road, so I went to send an email and hopefully talk about it on your return. I'm also going to email you a PDF on some of the research I did on water taxi. It is as lots of things to put together end to end with your former captain's ticket, you will be able to understand the ability of such a program to go forward. I think Bo, the owner of the water taxi organization, would be willing to go forward if he got the necessary endorsement of the stakeholders. In the end, he could advertise the availability of such a service without endorsement. He might not get the backing of the county use of the main dock or the fire department. Uh, so give it a once over and we can talk more. I am running for a life act position in January. This is subject to county council review first. I won't go off in my own direction. Your committee will ultimately present to life act your proposed way forward, uh, Tom. So, and then he also sent me emergency medical evacuations from Lummi Island. Mm -hmm. uh, on December 11th, 2021, I contacted Outer Island Excursions. Those are the people that are over on Orcas. I was trying to determine if their water taxi services might be available to Lummi Islanders in an emergency, and if this is something they would want to provide. I spoke with Bo Brandau, the owner of this company. They have a fleet of 11 vessels. The vessels are and captains are all Coast Guard approved. He would be able to land any of his vessels on Lummi Island. Their fleet is comprised of fast catamarans that have the front ingress and egress. They have performed like services on Waldron and Orcas Island. They are able to land directly on a beach, on a boat dock, or directly interfacing with our two ferry docks. There are four locations where a patient could load onto a vessel. Scenic Estates Dock, May through September. Sunset Beach is another place to land. Lego Bay is the third option. The fourth location is the Lummi Island Ferry Dock itself. On the Lummi Island County Dock, the ramp can be lowered to the water taxi, but at one to two feet above their bow. The weight of our ramp cannot sit directly on their vessel. During dry dock or ferry service interruption, the water taxi could deliver safe service. During the six to eight hours to put in a ferry dock, the tribe fueling dock is an alternate option for landing. These water taxis can operate day or night. The limiting factors are the direction of the winds and tides. If the winds are easterly or westerly, that dictates which dock would be most appropriate. At Sunset Beach, low tide would only allow the vessel to get within 20 to 30 feet of shore. A northwest wind makes that operation not possible. And under no conditions will they operate their vessels in winds over 25 miles per hour. The sequence of events to get the patient from the island to the hospital are as follows. 
911 is called by the person attending to the patient at the time of the incident. Lummi Island Fire Department is then contacted by 911. The EMT vehicle takes the patient to one of the four locations for egress from the island. Two EMTs would board the vessel with the patient. On the gooseberry side, the patient is tra transferred to the Marietta EMT and then brought to the Self Hospital. Our fire department's insurance would cover island travel. However, since Lemmy Island EMTs would be on their vessel, the LI Fire Department would have to get additional insurance coverage to cover the trip to Gooseberry Point. This would be done with a rider on the department's current insurance policy. Orcas Island Excursion is interested in providing this service. This would be an alternative service to air care airlift Northwest helicopters. Bo Brandau is willing to make a presentation to LIFAC as a starting point going forward. In February, he is traveling out of country, but he may be able to join the live pack Zoom meeting. More information is available on their website, written by Tom Philpott. So that's what, you know, that's what uh, he's been working on that. It's some of the stuff we already know. We haven't talked with Outer Island Excursions but um, you know, it's a good follow-up thing, and I can I'll send you a copy of. I, I'll just forward this email to you too, and the rest of the committee. So this is I, this is what Dave Perry had mentioned. He said that there's a boat, basically boat ambulance, but without a dock. And now he thought you couldn't. They wouldn't come without a dock, basically. But these folks are saying they have a way to do that, but they would need that relationship with the fire department. If it were, if they were operating under emergency, not urgent, and that's the question. At what point? Well, what these guys are is they're not really a boat ambulance service. They are, they, they do whale watch trips and stuff like yeah. that, but their yeah. boats are capable of going up onto the beach or close to the beach. I've watched them offload passengers onto Sunset Beach because I, I live in Isle Air. And what they do, they just have a, a stainless steel ladder basically that goes down across the bow of a, of, of a standard boat. They're not drop down landing craft vehicles. So, so basically, though, it, it would have to be in combination with the Lummi Island. It would have to be a 911 call that Lummi Island Fire Department was responding to. That's what I'm thinking. That's what it sounds like. Um, yeah. So, the, you know, I'm not sure where Tom is going with this. So uh -huh. it, 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 it will be something to follow up, but I'm not going to follow it up until I get home. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I'll go ahead and forward it to the rest of the committee tonight. So anyway. And and I guess the other question is if it were if it were with the um, fire department, our fire department, then they would be allowed to use the ferry dock. I don't know that. I can't. And that would be that. something that we would have to ask. Yeah. For some, from, from what Chris, from what Chris said, I had that impression, but I'm not sure if that's an official answer. Um, so that's, that's part of what I can't, I can't always quite tell what, where the lines are for. Is that an official county, you know, memorandum? Yeah. And I, I think that, you know, these guys would have to come over from Orcas. Uh huh. And I don't know where they, I think they may keep their boats in West Sound or at, on the, they may keep their boats on this side 
um, on West Beach in that West Beach Marina. I don't know is where, that where the airplane, where the, um, the near, airport is. Near where, yeah, near where the airport is. So they would be faster than getting a boat from Anacortes. True. And they'd be fast if they were coming over to Sunset Beach. Mm -hmm. um, you still get, then after that, obviously, you still get around the island. But, um, okay. But so it's good to have, I mean, the more, more things like this, I think you, we have, it's still better to have, like, the realistic. Yeah, reasons. and this is um, the company that the Willows has, uh, has 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 called up and has chartered to get their customers to dinner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. Anyway, so anyway, yeah, I I will email Tom, but I'm going to go ahead and forward the letter to everybody so they they're just yeah. you know this is this has come up too so. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. And and the, the one that Chris says is the the two fire boats. There's a fire boat that's stationed at Sandy Point, mm -hmm. and there's another fire boat that's stationed in Bellingham. Yeah. And the fire boats are different. Like they 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 could come into the dock at Scenic Estates. Yes. I don't know if they can do, if they're equipped for, for a beach landing or not. Right. Uh, I did not Most aluminum that. boats, if you can run them up onto the shore, uh -huh. um, as long as they're long enough and they've got enough water to keep their, you know, to back off again. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I got the impression from what Chris said. I have a feeling the fireboats needed a dock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good question, though. In this area, um, it would be nice to have that, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. So anyway, yeah. So I guess, like, you know, I guess the thing that, Tom is talking about would be, well, hey, I need to get into town. I don't know someone who has a boat. Yeah. I need to get into town. I'm going to call these guys. They can come pick me up and I can get a trip into town. <laughs> and making people aware that these guys have a service. Right. So anyway. Well, and that's part of the, you know, I think again, yeah, the whole coordination effort during an outage is to say as early as possible, um, especially to have some kind of, what, what I feel like is what would be great is to have more like the, the clearinghouse. You have somebody like say, I don't know, three of us through so committee members respond and say, okay, we're going to manage the next couple of hours while this mm -hmm. outage is being launched um, and immediately find out how many people need to get on the island because if you can get these folks deployed and they're going to take three people then maybe the cost is not hideous i don't know it's yeah yeah there, right so at least it's good to tell people these are options and you know yeah like what what are my options if i am on the island, what are my options if I if I need to urgently get over and I find out the ferry isn't working? Right, right. Instead of three hours later, then realize, oh, I could have done something three hours ago, but I didn't know what it was, and so now I'm, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that's where the um, committee offers a service in being able to put those together in one place so you have some sort of deployment um, plan that you can get put into place faster and hopefully have it you know yes you hope it's reasonably you know i have no idea what the expense would be but depends on how badly you need to get someplace i guess yeah yeah 
Exactamundo. So and that's, I guess, like what you have to, you have to kind of just weigh that. So. Yeah. So anyway, okay. Well, All I right. can't, I guess we can just say, call it for the night, I think. Yes, that sounds good. Anything else you can think of? No, right now I think this. Okay, uh, Lane. Kind of getting, getting <laughs> All right. Hey, okay, you. Enjoy your mom. Enjoy the. Is it still raining or did it stop raining there? Um, it stopped tonight. Uh, it was raining yesterday. Uh, last night it 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 was not. It was just kind of misting a bit yesterday. Uh, last night it rained real hard, oh. and then um, to. Today, it's not bad at all. It was a nice day. Uh, blue skies went walking the dog at a, down a green, green belt, and it was just beautiful. So yeah, it's supposed to get real rainy again next week, though. So, And you're there for the month? I am. We may decide to come back a little early. I'm I'm just really weighing it with the COVID increasing and stuff like that. They had like almost, I think on Friday they I think that I think I saw something that there were like ten thousand cases of new diagnosis in LA County, and I'm like, oh my god, really? You know, and so I'm finding myself sitting in this place and really? oh geez, Louise. I don't know if I want to be here with a rapidly spreading virus. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Well, but it's like right now, there's also, I'm going to stop recording, I think. But um, 